Hey, I'm Elizabeth Banks. I am the producer, writer, director, and one of the stars of the new Charlie's Angels. And this is Notes on a Scene. Charlie's Angels has been around since the late 70s. It was an iconic TV show about beauties with brains kicking butt in a job that few women had ever done before, which was law enforcement. I wanted to get involved because I wanted to tell a story about women at work. I really felt like this could be a celebration of women working together, of a sense of sorority and camaraderie. This new iteration is about a corporate whistleblower. Um, her name is Elena Hofflin. She works at a big tech company that's putting out a really cool new sort of uh, power source in the world that's sustainable, et cetera, et cetera. And she knows that it's it can be weaponized. And we base this storyline on a lot of corporate malfeasance stories <laughs> that we're hearing about all the time. This woman goes to meet with Charlie's Angels because they're the only people that believe her and want to help and support her. And this scene is her introduction to spycraft and what the angels are capable of doing. If we're in the building when they do their next security suite, we're all going to German prison. <laughs> One of my big inspirations was the end of the Thomas Crown Affair starring Pierce Brosnan and Rene Russo. When Pierce Brosnan goes to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and dresses as Magritte in his little bowler cap and then he has tons of other Magritte's run around the building and they watch it on a screen and get completely confused about what's going on. Okay, so the game is afoot and this is where you see the security screens, right? And this guy, we've already established, we don't really like very much. He told Elena earlier in the day, who he's obsessed with, that she needs to smile more. And ladies don't like that. So he's our bad guy that's gonna close in. Ralph, no. we've got pretty press out here, but the system says he's already in the Yeah, 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 there's a glitch. I think the computer thinks Elena Hofflin is... So he's just realized that Elena Hofflin, who he's obsessed with and he knows exactly what she looks like, that this person from behind is supposed to be Elena Hofflin, but in fact, if you see the ID that she just swiped, this is Sven Ludwig, who she's already taken out earlier in the morning. So this is how she got into the building. We're doing a sort of, again, a game of three card money, like where is Elena Hofflin? Is this Elena Hofflin? If that is Elena Hofflin, why does she have this guy's ID? It's a lot to process, which is what part of the fun of watching the scene is. This scene we also talk about as bowl cuts, and bowl cuts unfortunately don't cover the back of your neck, and as you'll see, I wanted to make sure that when you're watching this sequence, you can't tell from behind who's who. That's part of the game, and so we had to make the wigs a little bit longer and not just bowl cuts, so they're like long bowl cuts, and we made them ombre because ombre is just cool. Fun fact, this actor actually auditioned for another role in the movie, and um, we decided that he'd be a really good uh, Ralph. And so he came and played it for us. But David Stutter is the same. He's a really big actor in Germany. So now the gig is up, and they're going to start closing in. Right now, I'm sending you an image of Elena Hofflin. Get it to all our guys. I want her detained for questioning. Yes. I need you to exhibit some attention-seeking behavior. So many ideas. She really did about 50 takes. This is Kristen Stewart. And it just said, play around on camera, do whatever you want. And she was like, give me some ideas. I'm like, act like a monkey, you know, walk like an elephant, dance, do whatever you want, just do jumping jacks. In the script, it was scripted as just jumping jacks. And we just said, let's just play around. She's so game in this film. You'll see this character is someone who you really believe will literally do anything. And that's what she's showing here. They're walking around with a mobile device that has all of the cameras on it. Here they come, closing in. Stop! Hey! Hey! One of the things that happened before I started making this movie was I wanted to talk with female stunt coordinators about how women do action because we all know that it's probably different from how men do action and I really wanted to make the action in this movie specific to a Charlie's Angels movie. I wanted to understand, can a 130 pound woman actually overtake a 250 pound man? What are some of the strategies they would employ to, um, to defeat somebody? And it was really helpful to hear from from them about what women do or should do to help defend themselves. So first things first, if there's a gun in any situation, you're very likely to get shot. And it's not like disarm him, take the gun and shoot. 
Disarming somebody of a gun is also really hard to do, and it's still likely that it's going to go off during that process. So one of the things that happens in this scene is that the first thing Sabina does when this guy comes in is she makes sure that the gun is out of the way. And it's not for, she's not going to use it, and neither is he. So she's waiting. Bang. Gone, and not only gone, but totally out of the scene. And that's just helpful because it means like we don't have to worry about the gun and is the gun going to go off. So the gun is out of the way. The other thing that the stunt coordinators um, who are women said, draw them into as small a space as possible because then they don't have the full reach of their power for punching and hitting and kicking. They're really good at climbing. Like Kristen Stewart's character is like a little monkey in here. She can literally, you can use their body as leverage to get up and over them. I felt like if we put them in this really cool space, and of course I wanted to make something very graphic as well, that we could put them in here. She's now in a small space. We can understand how a woman fights. Um, the other funny thing I'll tell you about this scene is every time you see them from this side angle, <coughs> we actually moved the entire sequence into this stall because this wall, we were able to chainsaw out and I got to use a chainsaw on set, which was very exciting. Um, this wall was the one we were gonna remove, and when we removed it, the whole set shook, and it didn't work. So we had to, at the end of the day, chainsaw through a wall to shoot all the side angles of this sequence. So the other thing is, I love playing with some of the tropes in action movies, especially dude movies, and Mission Impossible had a really fun bathroom scene. So this is like a small homage. The other thing that this scene showcases really is how much training Kristen Stewart did, how much of her own fighting she did. She was incredible. All the women were. Ella Belinska does almost all of her own stunts in the movie. Um, Naomi Scott did some training as well. They all did weapons training, driving, um, and a lot of uh, kickboxing and Thai kickboxing um, and fight choreography. So this this was well choreographed. This guy um, was the, the stunt guy that we used the whole time. He was in the rehearsal with Kristen, so she was super um, confident in playing around with him on the day. Because the thing is, as much as you choreograph it, at the end of the day, you kind of want it to look really real. And when adrenaline comes, comes into the equation, which it does when you're actually calling action on set, you never know what's gonna happen. And the two of them were really comfortable with each other, so they were able to, um, she was really able to give it to him in the scene. A lot of elbows because it's a good pressure point or a good fighting point for women. So one of the reasons they're wearing red boots is for this exact moment in the movie. I wanted to make sure that the feet were really iconic as well in this scene. Right now, if you, if you had a toilet in here and a toilet in here, then what you would see, look, I'm even gonna put the little flusher on it. What you'd see is that um, right now there's a girl crouched, she's pretty, she's got cute hair, um, a crouched on the toilet here, and then Kristen is on this toilet, so cute, and then she's about to whoosh, jump down right now, bango, and out she comes. So as you can tell, I, I don't draw, especially under pressure, <laughs> and especially toilets. The next beat of the scene that the that was written into the script always was this idea of like women's invisibility and we play with that as a theme throughout the movie and just little kind of easter eggs and um, because invisibility in Charlie's Angels is a total superpower as is underestimation. This is just a little nod right here um, when she when the the sensor doesn't recognize her that she's invisible. <laughs> And you know, very easy uh, way to transition out of the scene because again, it's just part of a much bigger uh, set piece. Just blind the guy. Also, very good advice for anyone in a bathroom who's um, being attacked. Just put stuff in the guy's eyes. Also, kick him in the balls. So that's actually the number one thing that the stunt coordinator told us. Go for the balls first. My film school has been my career as an actor and I've been on so many sets and worked with so many different people that um, you kind of start to understand and get into a rhythm with people and I just try and give as much like love and care to people, make them feel confident and excited about being on set every day. Working with a female ensemble um, now was not a coincidence at all. I think I really wanted to build on the themes of sorority and camaraderie and teamwork that I established in the work in Pitch Perfect and I just I love that feeling. It's, it's, some, it's something that runs through most of what I make 
as a producer and as a writer director, and um, I, this is not not an exception. It's really the rule. We in it together. Don't call me angel.